Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Rex MD, who makes getting generic and branded Viagra so easy. Everything's online, even the prescription. There is no embarrassing doctor's visits, waiting in the pharmacy. And you can get started with a sample pack of Viagra for free if you go to rexmd.com slash holly. Okay, so you've seen my guest today on the cover and in centerfold of Playboys Around the Globe. Uh, she's a proud, sober bikini model, and she co-hosts a podcast, Inside OnlyFans. Welcome, CJ Spark. Woo, thank you so much. What an intro. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing things. I didn't even remember some of those things, so that's good. I'm it's, proud of myself. It's funny. You like for, <laughs> you forget about all the things that you've accomplished or that you yeah do in you your do. life until someone reads your bio and then you're like huh i'm like hey, i've done shit with my life go me yeah <laughs> that's right i like that so um welcome thank you so thank much you. for coming uh I, we usually kind of you know with all my guests we start at the beginning um because you know we have unusual jobs mm -hmm. and not everybody finds themselves in this career so how did you get started okay so i got started first doing the webcamming mm -hmm. way back in the day i used to work for a company called tsm they had super tiny bikinis oh i remember yeah, yeah. i was gonna say mm -hmm. you might have heard of them and um we were they were kind of like one of the first bikini companies to do like the group shoots and mm -hmm. they were a, it was a very serious at the time it's a little now it's a little more um, not quite as serious, but very much then it was very serious. I got scouted from MySpace and I worked with them and um, I was going back and forth to L.A. And one day they were like, you know, you can make a lot of money if you just chat online to people in a bikini. And this was, again, in the days of MySpace. And I was just like, what in the world? That sounds so bizarre. I don't really know about that. And um, I ended up getting a second DUI. And I was uh, carless, licenseless, and needed money. And I was like, okay, tell me more the, about this, you know, chatting online to people in a bikini. And so that's how I got started. I got started working on Streamate, chatting with people um, very, very innocently, if you can believe that or not, or very naively at first. And then it started from there. I, I loved it. I thought it was so fun. And the checks were rolling in. And I was like, okay. Give me more. Were you surprised by the kind of con like what kind of conversations were you having? Because, you know, one thinks that when you webcam, it's always about, mm -hmm. you know, sex. But I've t spoken to so many webcam models who have said that a lot of times it's just guys looking for a connection and just someone to have a conversation with. And they talk about everything. Every. Yeah. Everything. I this was probably well over a decade ago, um, not to date myself. I mean, you already did. You said, my, you said my seven. You said my space. So. <laughs> I said my I know people sometimes look at me. And they're like, what's that? I'm like, it was like Instagram and TikTok back in the day. Don't worry. Back about when it. the dinosaurs existed. Exactly. Yeah. Back when you had a big computer, like yeah. a big one. And so we don't have those anymore. But yeah, so she's 37. We're looking good. We're doing the Botox. We're drinking our water, getting our sleep. And um, so I first started doing that, like I said, um, very naively, I really didn't realize at the time that I was excited to make money. I mm -hmm. was really excited for that. I've always been like a hard worker. Um, and so I just thought this would be a job that I wouldn't have to leave. And I'd still have like the freedom to go and do whatever I needed to do at that time. And uh, so it was very intriguing. And I was literally just sitting there for the first few months um, talking about probably you know work and I remember there was one time there was a guy who would tell me that he was in a marching band and he would tell me all these different things and share with me that this is, was his dream to be in a marching band um there were businessmen people that were traveling back and forth and they're just like you know I'm in my hotel room and I'm I'm all alone like I'm just lonely and I seen you online you seem to be on here a lot and so I figured I would just check in and see what you're up to um there was a lot of very innocent conversations, especially right off the bat, because I didn't really know 
what was <laughs> I didn't really know where it was going to turn for me. Yeah. And I think at that point, too, you didn't realize, oh, there's money to be made if I was to go and do other things like take off my top. Mm-hmm. I just was like chatting with these people. I think it was like five bucks a minute or something. And so I would just listen and I thought, OK, I just need to keep them talking and I'll make my money like that. So there was no real concept of like I could take my clothes off and say, OK, I need a hundred dollar tip, baby. I just thought I'm going to keep them talking And for the longest time, there was really people on there that just were lonely and they Mm -hmm. just wanted a friend. I was on there all the time because I was at home with no license. And Mm -hmm. so we would kind of lean on one another. And from there, it's it started to where I'm like, okay, I think I'm kind of good at this. Let's see what else we can. Yeah. Do you have any fans now that started back then? Yes. Yes. I have. I have one in particular, Jesse. I always shout Jesse out because. He's still with me to this day. Jesse, we love you. I follow him on Instagram. We still chat a little on Instagram. He's definitely at the top as far as like fans are concerned. I think one night, um, I can't I can't recall when, but one night I even got in a fight with my um, boyfriend at the time. And I think I I was like super drunk and I like called him on like face, not not FaceTime, um, Facebook. I like I was like, oh, I'm just having a bad day. And he was so shocked. Yeah, I bet he was. Jesse was like, what is going on? And I was like, I'm just having a really bad day and I don't know what to do. And he was like, oh, my God. OK, it's going to be OK. And we chatted on the phone on on Facebook for like, I think, probably 15 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK, I can't be doing this all the time. But like, I just really needed a friend. Yeah. And Jesse was there. Jesse so was there for you. He's my real life friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I I love my fans. I have some that have been with me from day one and I love that you can really build lasting relationships. Especially in that point where I just really didn't know where I was what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um I built lasting relationships and I also had like people kind of turn on me too. I actually got like catfished really hard one time. Um by, by a fan? Yes, by a fan. Yes. How yeah. did that happen? Okay, it was so, it was so crazy to this day. I'm like, what is wrong with me? But I was lonely too. Like mm-hmm. when I first started the webcaming, I was I was lonely as well. I was feeling like I wasn't really doing much in my life, and I was kind of in a down, not a downward spiral, but in a downtick in my life. I'd just gotten my second DUI. I had really no way to work, and I was still working during the day, but I was like driving illegally. I was like really messed up about that. I felt so horrible. And um, so I moved down to L.A. for maybe like six months or so to live in this webcam house because I was just like, I'm not doing anything up here. Where were you living before? I was living in Galt or in Sacramento. Okay, (laughs) that in that area in NorCal. And um, I just wasn't progressing. I was sleeping on a friend's couch and I was like, let me just go down to L.A. and move into this webcam house. It seems so scary because. Again, this was before. Now you hear of a webcam house or a webcam warehouse where girls go and they work and there might be 10 different girls in there and 10 different setups. That's that's pretty common. I know not everybody knows about that, but that's pretty common mm-hmm. to where you would have a specific workplace set up for your webcaming. It's like and, we work for webcaming. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah, yeah. You go in there you, or even like, you know, like a dancers, but then you have all your separate rooms. You know, everyone, you know, the door person and, and it's a community. It's like a family. And this was in the beginning of that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to go down to L.A. with these really people that I don't really know that well. I know them. I know I'm going to be safe, but I'm going to be away from my friends, away from my family. And I just was like, I don't really have anything to lose. Let me go down there and let me do it. So I went down there and it was me and two other girls in a big house. And I was happy doing what I was doing. But I was lonely. I felt like I didn't have any real connections. Everybody was very sweet and I was being well taken care of, but I didn't have any real connections. And I was on this webcam. We used to work at like eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Sometimes I would leave the webcam on when I slept, Mm -hmm. which is a fetish. That's Mm -hmm. a fetish. So people would even tip me. I would wake up and I'd have a few hundred dollars. People just like watching you sleep. Yes. I know it sounds crazy, but that's a real thing. There's yep. not a lot of people that are into that, but you're out there. God bless you. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we were on there for so long. And this was so new, too. And so it was just like the more you work, the more money you could make. And I didn't really have anything else going on at the time. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to work a lot. So I was on there all the time. And there was one guy on there in particular. 
um i think i've said his name before it, it, this is so funny that i even like remember his name but it was like jc poo poo head or jc poo poo face or something <laughs> the weirdest name what was he 10 like- i don't know <laughs> And he knew all the other girls in the house. He was, that's how often he was on. Okay. Yeah. It's so bad. It's so bad. But anyways, I made a connection with JC Poo Poo Face. <laughs> and please say his name often because it's. <laughs> I know. I couldn't. I like couldn't. Everyone would call him JC, of course, you know, but it's like JC Poo Poo Face is back in on the, you know, he's asking for you. When are you going to be done with your, you know, I'd be having a private show. I'm like, oh, and this was before cell phones. Uh Like we had, we had, well, it wasn't that far, but we'd have cell phones, but it was still to the point where you weren't on Facebook. You weren't. um, They weren't like smartphones. They weren't smartphones. Yeah. They were like razors. Exactly. It was a razor. You were getting charged per text. Yeah. So it's not like we are now, you know, we Holly and I both have our phones within like an arm's reach and that wouldn't that's not deemed unprofessional but mm-hmm. to have your phone sitting next to you or even within eye range was super unprofessional and mm-hmm. so we knew like okay just put the phone away and so we would have the messaging system on the computer where we could see uh, the other girls could say JC is in here he's wondering when you're when your show is done and I could be doing the show and still kind of answer really quick oh I'll be done in 10 so He gave me a little bit of money at first, but it was mostly just creating these um, friendships with the girls. He wasn't ever asking for anything. He wasn't mean. He was always complimentary. He would sit there all day on the computer with us and he would talk to each and every one of us and just was always very friendly. Um, I think we all got a little bit of money from him, but not really that much. And it seemed to be that he was somebody who just had a lot of free time. So he somehow convinced me that he was like this traveling uh, baseball player. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he told me that he was in like another country or whatever. He was traveling and he was lonely too. So he sent me, you know, these photos of I don't even know who this man was. Clearly it wasn't him. And uh, this man was like a good looking guy, you know, brown hair, brown eyes. And he's like always like in his uniform or about to swing the bat or something. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Me, this is so cool that this guy wants to talk to me. Not really realizing at that point, I'm like, I'm like pretty hot and fun. Like, why wouldn't somebody want to talk to me? But I'm still like. Also, this guy's last name is Poo Poo Face. Exactly. Yeah. Which is not like, I mean, I don't, I think I might have asked him like, what, you know, how did you get this name? And he's like, oh, it was a nickname my mom gave me or something. I'm like, okay, whatever. And so. I mean, (laughs) you know, know. my husband calls my daughter Poopy Pants. So. Yeah. That's what I. She's also two. (laughs) Yeah. Listen, these are all things, ladies and gents, if you're doing the webcamming, these are questions you should be asking. If yeah, someone's last name is Poopy Face, yeah, you might want to exactly. reconsider your relationship You might want to reevaluate what is happening with this person and not give them too much of your spare time. So lo and behold, I am like, we continue the friendship and we talk, we start talking off of the website. I'm thinking I'm talking to this, um, you know, young, hot, lonely guy. And I start sending him money to get a webcam because he's like, yeah, my webcam broke my you know, this was before webcams are like webcams are everywhere right now. You buy a computer. If it didn't have a webcam, yeah. we would be like, what kind of archaic piece of crap is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they all have. It's it's yes. it's written in built in. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so um, this was still at that time, too. And they were pretty expensive. So I sent him like one hundred dollars to get one from Walmart. And it was like, you know, excuse after excuse. I sent him $100 a couple more times. And finally, I was like, look, I'm not going to talk to you anymore if, like, we can't get on a webcam. This is starting to get really weird. So he and we would talk very late into the night. I'd be up late with him. I'd be up early. He'd be the first one that I'd, like, log in. He'd be the first one that was there. So we were very much, like, leaning on one another. I would tell him, like, I'm I'm sad, you know, I just, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. And But is he paying to talk to you? Is no. it a permanent? Okay, no. so this is, because I know that now um, a lot of times it's it's not a pay per minute situation. It's like a tip situation mm-hmm. or they get like extra, they mm-hmm. pay extra for a show. Or I know on right? OnlyFans, yeah, you're not necessarily charging for per minute. I think right. on some of the web, web uh, webcam sites, you, you still are being charged for a minute. And then if you need something extra, you're expected okay. to tip extra. Yeah, but we would, this was Skype. We oh, like switched over to Skype because okay. we were that good of friends. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. And so finally I was just like, this is not cool. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be friends. How come you can't show me your face? So finally one day he got turned on the webcam and um, I'll never forget. It was um, 
an older man who wasn't very fit. He was a little bit um, looked out of shape, a little larger, and it was black and green. Like the webcam was black and green. And there was PCs like all around like this. And there was like a, you know, like a, like a big gulp or something right here next to all the PCs. And it was like in black and green. So he was surrounded by computers. Surrounded by computers. It looked like a basement and was somebody that was not, obviously not that, it was not a professional baseball player. It wasn't the <laughs> Jesse Poo Poo face. Yeah, that you it wasn't the Jesse Poo Poo face. Exactly. Yeah. And I thought, you know. What did he say? He, he just like kind of looked at me and I was just like, looked at him. And I think I was so distraught because at that point I was like, obviously I'd been lied to. I stayed online with him. I stayed online for like another 10 minutes and I was just like, well, I guess this is why you didn't. Well, Mr. Poopy face. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. do you have to say for yourself? Exactly. It, because I was so shocked. But Holly, here's the thing. I stayed talking to him. I like was, we weren't like boyfriend and girlfriend, but I that connection. Yeah. I didn't want to give that connection up. Yeah. And we were so connected um, that I did stay talking to him for a while, but I was like, I sent you money. Like I've told you like the innermost workings of like, you know, my good days, my bad days, and you were lying to me. And so I was really hurt, but I stayed talking to him for like uh, probably another year I say talking to him and then finally but it wasn't the same so finally one day I think he got mad I I didn't answer something of his or he felt like he was being neglected and I was just like listen I still talk to you after everything you lied to me and you know like we're still friends and I want to be your friend but like it's not going to be the same mm -hmm. you know and so that was really tough but I got catfished so I'll never forget that yeah. I'll never forget that. If it makes you feel any better, I don't think I've ever told this story, but I got catfished by somebody pretending to be Danica Patrick, the race car driver. I actually had forgotten about this. How? This happened how? how? I know. So long ago. It was like her assistant who called us. And this was back when I was my mom was still shooting and I was working for my mom. Mm -hmm. And they basically said that Danica had like some sexy glam shoot coming up or wanted to shoot some sexy glam pictures. Mm -hmm. And she wanted Suze to shoot it because she wanted a woman to photograph her and she wasn't necessarily comfortable like doing sexy photos because it wasn't her thing. And she thought like- All legit, and it, it, Which legit. sounded legit. And my mom was like, um, my mom I think was like on the edge of retiring and she was like, I'm not gonna do this. And I was like, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And so then I started talking to them and it was never Danica it was always like her assistant mm -hmm. um but yeah and then you know there was several conversations and then there was like she was supposed to fly in and meet us and then there was some what seemed logical excuse as right. to why she couldn't and then uh and then there was some there it, it started to get like right. super fishy I was like mm. Because at first, like, it took them a while to convince me. I'm like, why the fuck? Like, Danica Patrick can have anyone she right. can. Like, why would they want it to be me? And right. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, you could have any. There's tons of female right. photographers out there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, this person was super convincing. And then, you know, after a while, Did it was just like. Did they get money out of you? Or? I don't think so. No. No, they didn't. That was the weird thing. It was like, uh, at the end, I was like, what What? Would, what did you want? Like, right. what were you trying to get? Right. Like, what? And I guess. I don't know. They just, I think they just wanted to feel important. I think they did too. And they just wanted to like, maybe it was a fantasy in their head that they yeah. like thought was a reality. But yeah. yeah I so. think people are, are lonely and longing for connection. And yeah. I think that's why OnlyFans is kind of gotten so big because, you know, as we all know, porn is out there for free. You mm -hmm. can go and watch porn for free. You shouldn't. You should get it homegrown from the creators. However, you know, I've definitely been like traveling somewhere and I'm like, OK, let me, you know, Google this really quick and yeah. let me have some fun. Yeah. And, you know, we we all do it, but it's like there's no connection. You open the phone, you watch what you need to watch, and then you go on. You know, you do what you need to do. You go on about your day. But I think that's why um, something like OnlyFans, you know, like there's that real connection. And I think yeah. that's how the webcamming really worked, too, is yeah. these people really felt like 
you know, this is my my girlfriend or this is my friend at least mm-hmm. that I know and, and, and love and care about. And they also know and love me in a way and care about me too. Yeah. And it's that connection that you keep coming back for more. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, there's definitely that, that like fan creator connection. And speaking of you, you dated a fan once, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We are going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back for that story because I know you guys... Um, love to hear those kinds of stories. So hang tight and we will be right back. Guys, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? We've all had those nights where we get too nervous or maybe we just had too much to drink. There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift and drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, because RexMD is here spreading Christmas cheer even when you've had a few too many beers. RexMD is FDA approved and the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. They have sponsored this episode to help you always be prepared. RexMD has made it simple, easy, and cost-effective to help all the men out there last longer and feel more confident in the bedroom. RexMD makes getting generic, branded Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription, and they deliver it discreetly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, and no copays. Take advantage of their best deal that they've ever offered and save up to 90% and only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash holly for this deal. rexmd.com slash holly for up to 90% off. Give the gift of pleasure this holiday season with RexMD. Hey guys, we're back. So, all right. So CJ, you, (laughs) you have dated a fan who was not Jesse Poo Poo Face. Yeah. It was not. It was Jesse is the good one that I'm still with. This was JC. JC poo poo face. Yeah. Sorry, Jesse. I didn't mean to get you and JC poo poo face yeah. mixed up. Two distinct people, so different people. Um, yeah. So tell us your story. So again, this is with with the webcaming. I was like, so I just can't even believe sometimes, you know, like the things that we do i have a lot of looking back in this and sobriety where i'm like how did i make it out girl (laughs) i feel you so hard on that (laughs) i'm so grateful that we you know we get to sit here and tell these stories now but this is one of the things that i was doing the webcaming again and um this guy had came came into the room and like he would book came, when I say came into the room he would book like a private webcam room so Mm -hmm. i was i would be in the living room or i would be in my bedroom but he would take take me to the the private where he's paying um a premium it could have even been like 10 bucks a minute or so to have me all to himself because you can take the webcam performer to a room but then other people can also come in and Mm -hmm. kind of watch and then he would take me to the private room where it would just be him and I one-on-one which didn't always happen very often so because it costs a lot of money and so this guy would say, okay, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm going to come, you know, what are you doing for the next hour? I'd be like, well, I'm just doing this. And so it's okay, I'm going to take you to the, we're going to go private for, for an hour. And he would do that probably four or five days a week for like, I think it was probably almost a year. He never asked me to get naked. Once again, he was just like a traveling uh, businessman. And we would just talk about his family, his kids, his well, he was getting divorced, so his divorce, his kids, um, his work, where he was traveling to. I mean, it got to where we would talk about his mom and his, um, you know, extended family, friends, different things. I got to where I like knew everything about this guy, and I had yes, I know what everyone's thinking right now at this point. Did you ever see this man on the webcam? <laughs> yes, I did, and he. <laughs> And he was, in fact, you know, who, who, who he, he said had, he was. Yes, who he had painted himself to be. It was him. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, I learned that lesson. And um, so he was like, is is there ever a way? So after we'd been talking for about a year, again, he'd never seen me naked. There was never any like a sexual innuendo. We were just spending time together. I knew that he was attracted to me. Um, and after a while, I was like, you know, intrigued by him as well. So. I, we had planned to meet. I was living in LA and I was going back to Sacramento and uh, I was going to visit some family. And I said, well, I'm going to Sacramento. Um, I'm being in between Sacramento and LA, you know, this month. And he was like, well, I'm actually going to go check out a hotel in Sacramento. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow. All right. So, you know, why don't we just meet for lunch? And so we met for lunch again, you know, I was like, 
I I just nowadays I would be like, okay, what you know, like what, what are you gonna be wearing? What are you gonna be doing? I, I have an hour tops. Like it's not. I don't even know if I would do this, but I think I would just be so much more proactive. At this point, I'm like, yeah, let's go meet for lunch at this place and da da da. da. And uh, so we we met for lunch, and you know, fast forwarding through a lot here, um, we already had that connection. So when I met him. Um, he spoke like several different languages, which I didn't know. He like um, turned around to order something. And I think he might have saw that the waitress looked Spanish or something. And so we were at a Mexican restaurant and he started speaking Spanish to her. And I was like, whoa, oh, my God, that's I didn't see that coming. That's pretty sexy. Um, he dressed well. He smelled good. And he was older than me. He was about 20 years older than me. And I was just so intrigued. I was like, wow, you know, this is. I can't believe I'm like meeting my friend in person and like, whoa, my friend's pretty hot. And so I was intrigued from the from the very minute we had met. And uh, we hung out as friends, you know, for I think a couple days longer after that. And then we spoke on the phone about potentially going to see each other in a romantic way. And I did. <laughs> and after that, it was like off to the races. Um, we had incredible chemistry. We had a real connection. That was the thing. I don't think I would have ever been able to do this mm -hmm. if we didn't have that real connection. And I, I get offers all the time, you know, on Instagram or even on OnlyFans. Oh, would you ever meet a fan? And it's like, I, you know, of course, nowadays it's, it's a lot more dangerous, unfortunately. Um, you hear these crazy stories all these time, all the time There's about a lot of predators. Out yeah, there. about these women, and um, I'm feel so fortunate that I had such a positive experience because it, there was no indicator whether it was going to be good or bad. I just felt like I had known this person for so long, um, but I, I ended up getting like in a very in a very serious relationship with that person, and that guy ended up being my very first sugar daddy. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't know what that was until. I guess I wouldn't say sugar daddy, though. There's been some talk about that because I have heard from people like a sugar daddy is not somebody that you like love or that you would call a boyfriend or that sometimes these girls are like not even having sex with the sugar daddy. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what the point, you know, if I'm like with somebody and I'm making it seem like we're in a relationship, I feel like I'm going to have sex with that person and right. I'm going to be like also emotionally invested. So I don't know, maybe I wasn't so good at that part, but this guy was, was it a my monogamous boyfriend. relationship. Well, for me, it was a monogamous relationship, not so much for that guy, because oh. I found out that he wasn't in fact going through a divorce. He was oh. very much still with so the annoyed. wife. And like a year later, she called me one day because she had found a receipt from he had bought me some jewelry and she had found the receipt. I think he wanted to get caught. I don't know. This poor guy. He has like four kids. First, he told me he only had two. I was going through a divorce. Then it came out that he had four. Then it came out that he was still living in the same house as his wife, but they were sleeping in se separate rooms. And that, so it's like it all started to unwrap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here I am. I'm just like, OK, let's let's be boyfriend and girlfriend now. Like I was just very I'm grew up in a small town so i'm so trusting it's one of the things i really like about myself still but it definitely has gotten me into some situations yeah where i'm like why didn't i see that coming that was not smart yeah so that being said i just took everything that he had told me at face value but i will say it was um it was a beautiful experience for me because i had never had anybody um treat me in that way where i needed to move and he was like got some I was like I'm gonna have to pack everything up and move and I'm so frustrated and I don't know when I'm gonna have the time to do this and he was like call a moving company I'll get you moved and then I got into my new place and he was like do you need anything and I was like yes I I had moved out from a um, roommate a situation and I moved in somewhere by myself and I didn't have a lot of the things and he was like make a list and I'll handle it and I was just like wow this is so incredible. This is so attractive. At that point, I wasn't I wasn't anybody that was like needing. I really needed the help and the guidance. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't like out buying me like a Birkin or like a pair of Louboutins. He was like buying me dishes. <laughs> 
like, I need like a matching cup and like some forks that match. And, you know, like, could you maybe pay like the deposit and then I'll pay the next month? Uh, I, I had a guy who was, yeah, I don't know if I would call him my sugar dad either. I never slept with him. He was just like a fan who yeah. appreciated my work and he kept wanting to get me stuff. Obsessed. And I was very uncomfortable with it. And for the longest time, I was like, I don't yeah. like want anything. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he just kept saying yeah. like, I really want it. And I'm like, look, I'm like, I will never sleep with you. I right. will never like this will never happen. Right. But if you like really want to get me something, right. he's like, I'll buy you shoes and like clothes. And I was like, um, I need new lights. Yeah. For my right. studio. Right. And so he bought them for me. And Incredible. I was like, OK, I think there's something <laughs> so fucking beautiful when a man wants to take care of a woman. But I am not a proponent of like oh, it's a free meal or, you know, like mm -hmm. women using men and kind of like manipulating. Because we hear a lot of that, like, oh, you know, um, get your bag, girl, or whatever. Like, I, yeah, g buy me a fucking bag. Yes. However, you're like, we're going to be in a relationship. I'm not going to lie to you. So I love that you were like, told that guy, listen, if you want to do for me, that's cool. However, I'm not going to like lead you on or give you any type of illusion yeah. that we're going to ever be together or that I'm going to sleep with you or that you're really going to get much out of it. If yeah. you're going to do this for me, it's like you said, it's because you're a fan and you want me to continue creating. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He's like, look at it more like I'm your patron. Mm -hmm. You know how back, you know, in the Renaissance, like Michelangelo mm -hmm. had like a rich patron, like yeah. pay for him to like do his paintings. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want to help you and like support your career. Mm -hmm. And so that's I a was, fetish. That's a king. Yeah. And I was Who like, were we to say no? Yeah. They gave me a deposit, helped me buy my shoot van. That's incredible. Which I, but like, yeah, it was funny because none of the gifts were ever like sexy. They were very practical. Yeah. And I've always been incredibly independent mm -hmm. and always taking care of myself. And actually with like my ex-husband, like I paid all the bills. I supported wow. him. Like, so I'm usually the one who's the provider. So I just had was, a heart attack. <laughs> it was weird to have somebody like buy me stuff because I've never, I've literally never had that situation before. Yeah. It's... For me, I found and that was one of the things. I mean, it's, it's going to sound crazy, but I, it was actually very healing for me. You said one of your love language. We, we talk about love languages yes. and you said that your love language was receiving gifts. Yes. Yes. And more often than not, it's like it's not even just the receiving of the gifts. It's somebody saying they're going to do something and follow through. Yeah. Um, which I think is inherently um, is is ma it's it's not inherently masculine but it is incredibly masculine to be somebody that you say i'm gonna do this and then you show up for that it can also be a, a feminine trait but it feels for me i just like want to be i want to be taken care of i want to take care of others too mm -hmm. and i think that's a very feminine quality to give of yourself even to the point where sometimes we give so much and we're yeah. like wait a minute i need i need to take a bath i need to light a candle yeah. i need to read a book i need to do something yep um but so I would say probably a feminine quality is to give, 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 but also to receive. Mm -hmm. It's an incredibly feminine thing to receive. And I think that, um, you know, growing up, I've had some daddy issues. We all do. Parents are divorced, so on and so forth. Um, one of the things that happened growing up is like, you know, my dad would say he was going to do these things and he and he didn't yeah. either because maybe he didn't have the means or he maybe just didn't know how to like show up for his daughter in that way. I was the firstborn and and it's I'm I'm a I'm a daughter. So it's like sometimes I think um especially men might not, you know, especially with the firstborn, you you kind of you might learn through trial and error on the firstborn and then when you get to the second or the third you're like okay I know how to do this right now because I fucked up with the first one so yeah. I think there was a little bit of that with me I'm not trying to um, point the finger or pass on any blame because I'm grateful the way that I turned out but so for me when somebody says that they're going to do something and sometimes that does equate to gifts that for me is like ugh, makes my pussy wet Y'all, <laughs> they're like even when your dad does it yes no just kidding <laughs> but it's like it fe i feel my most feminine when i am being cared for mm -hmm. in that way yeah i can buy myself a nice pair of shoes or i can buy myself jewelry but it doesn't it doesn't sit with me in that same light mm -hmm. it doesn't and that's actually something i'm working on with my therapist i have a sex therapist um that i started seeing 
um, probably like three or four years ago, well, three, three years ago, right around the same time I got sober. So it'd be about three and a half years ago. And I started actually trying to practice to doing those nice things for myself Mm -hmm. and not, um, always expecting others to do that. And even asking for other people to do that for me. So that means either romantic partners, professional, or even in my friendships, um, I asked for what I need. And sometimes it's a fucking gift. Sometimes it's a gift. And you know what? We can talk about it. We can figure out maybe when a good time is to purchase it. If it's an expensive gift, you know, maybe it's not right that moment. Maybe you got to wait a few weeks or a month or whatever. And um, that for me is it feels so good being able to ask for what I want, Mm -hmm. even if it's something I don't necessarily need. Yeah. But if it's something that I want, it's okay to ask for it. You might not get it at that very same minute or even the next day, but there's power in the self-love that it takes to kind of show up for yourself and say, you know what? I really, I really want this bag, babe. I really want this pair of shoes, babe. Maybe we could go and have this fun with these shoes. You know, maybe I get, you know, we get kinky in the bedroom and this guy either likes the shoes or he's just like, fuck, you look so hot with those shoes on because I know it, you know, I did this for you or I know it turns you on. So it turns me on. Mm -hmm. I get turned on by gifts. I get turned on by taking care of. I know it's not the same for everybody, but for me, I've done a lot of work around that. And and that's, that's absolutely my love language. I think it stems from childhood. I think everything stems from childhood. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and so that's the long and short of it. Yes. Gifts are my love language. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's a really, that's really great that you can, you know, acknowledge what you need. I think that first of all, that's hard to, to, to acknowledge what it is that you need and then to ask for it because yeah, asking for, for anything feels, you know, I mean, I, I'm so bad at asking for help. I'd rather just, I'd rather just throw a tantrum, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. if I need like my husband to help me with something and Mm he doesn't, I hold it and I'm like, fine, I just do it my dad. And I'm all pissy about it, you know, rather than being like, look, like I actually really need your help with this. And can you show up for me? Mm -hmm. I would really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Because I think also too, as, as women were taught to, to not ask. Yeah. Don't you rock know, the for boat. help. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like do it all yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not even a female thing. Maybe it's just a human being thing. I think we're all scared of rejection. I'm scared of rejection. Yeah. I'm so scared of rejection. That's why I was like thinking I was like going to be in love with a man, JC Poo Poo face off, off the internet. You know what I mean? And that's where even before I'm so scared of rejection. And that is why primarily I date on the internet like everybody knows my biggest thing is that I'll, i go on seeking arrangements i'm not on, not on tinder i'm not on hinge or bumble or any of that or i don't know if it maybe is no hinge is for sh- straight people there's a gay one i'm not on that one either and um because i'm so scared of even being rejected in like in person i'm like well at least if i message this guy and he just reads it and doesn't respond. It's like, it's not as painful. I'm scared of rejection. I'm sure everybody is scared of rejection. And that comes to like the super small things. Like you were saying, you, you might, you know, maybe, Hey, Hey babe, can you turn the car on? It's cold. And, or the big things when you're like, Hey, I need to go have some me time. Can you watch the baby? You know, or I, it's, it's not, I think it's just like a level of like, I mean, this is this is like a little bit of like 12 step jargon, but we just don't feel worthy. I know Mm -hmm. I just don't feel worthy all the time. But that's what I like about asking for something, because I'm reaffirming I'm good enough to ask for this. Now, there's another person involved, so they may say, you know what? I can't do this right now, but maybe let's revisit it in the future. Mm -hmm. But you I think you also have to come from a space of like, hey, if I at least ask for what I need, that's a win right there. Yeah. Now, whether or not they can provide or do what you're asking at that very moment, that's different. That's besides the point. But I've learned too, if I ask for what I need, that's like a form of caretaking myself. Yeah. 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 And dealing with rejection in a healthy way is such Mm a big step. I mean, I remember for me before, you know, I met my current husband and got married, you know, and I was out there dating and, you know, there were, believe it or not, people, I got rejected by some guys. There were some guys that I I was into who didn't feel the same way about me. Idiot. Can you believe it? Fools. Oh my God. But you know, I, I was, I was actually proud of myself of being able to be like, you know what? Yes. I'm just not right for this person. Yes. I'm not right for everybody. Mm-hmm. That's impossible. Mm-hmm. 
I'm, it doesn't mean that I'm not worthy. It doesn't mean that I'm not attractive. It doesn't mean that, you know, I don't have something to give and there's not other people that would love to date me, but mm-hmm. I'm not right for this particular person. Right. And that's okay. Right. And they saved you time. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. But really no amount of money will ever get back that wasted that's time. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um. So you have on your Instagram that you are a proud sober bikini model. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us why that identity is so important for you. Oh, it's so important. Being sober is so important, especially online. And um, in our 12 step program, it says that we're kind of not supposed to be touting that we are sober and so much like the 12 step program, um, which obviously I don't really adhere to too well. Um, I feel like I drank online, so I have a responsibility to also be sober online. And what that looks like for me is not necessarily saying I'm sober. You should be sober too. just sharing, just sharing about my sober journey, my sobriety, just like I would share. Oh, going with the girls to brunch, to have a drink, clink, clink. Um, I, I try to just share. Because, you know, you get you have those people that are maybe like a religious sell it and they're off on the soapbox and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's Tom over there. He's talking about God again. And you don't listen. Nobody mm-hmm. listens. It's it's a turnoff. And so but if you're just sharing, like that's really what social media is all about. We're all sharing just your kind experience. Of sh- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sharing our experience, sharing our journey. And so I just try to um, share about my journey. So. I probably just a little over three and a half years ago, I kind of knew I had a problem with drinking. I was never very good at it. I just always drank way, way, way too much. I actually even got um, hit by a train once while I was like trying to impress this guy. Wait, (laughs) hold on. So you literally had a train ran on you. Yes. No, not a train <laughs> ran on me. Yes. No, no. no literally no. a train it ran on you. Ra- a literal not train. a gangbang. A real, exactly. Not a, I know. Not, I know. Might be Not different. the podcast headlines that we like to use to get a lot of clicks. <laughs> yeah. She literally. Can I please put this as a highlight and be like the time CJ had a train run on her. And the story is actually that she got hit by a train. Shit, not that shit. she had a line of guys banging her. <laughs> A literal train, an actual a choo-choo train on the track. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this is so wild to me. St- I still cannot even believe that this happened to me, but it really happened. And there's like some real factors in it. Um, I was so I was trying to impress this guy. I think I was trying to drink like a 40 pack. Okay. Was that like a thing or like a 24 pack or a 40 pack? And uh, this is when I was still living in Galt at the time. This guy, like, still, I know he still watches my um, Instagram sometimes. So, buddy, if you're out there, you'll have to maybe leave a comment and corroborate the story. Um, We were all hanging out at his house. I grew up in a small town. Not a lot of wealth or excitement going on there. So, like small town people do, we were, like, fucking around on the railroad tracks. I don't know. Somebody had a stick. We had beers. We were just, like, doing whatever. And we he lived across from there. And the railroad tracks were down the street from my house. So this was, wasn't was something that was new. We just kind of did it all the time. And I was so drunk out of my mind because I was trying to drink a 40-pack of, like, Bud Light. Ridiculous. And I wanted to be so cool. I thought this would impress this guy, this poor guy. And we were on the railroad tracks, and a train was coming toward us. <clears throat> like had happened many times before but I was so drunk and like out of my mind that I was like Ooh, wouldn't it be so cool if I could touch the train sounds dumb sounds so dumb I get it but here I was walking towards and everyone's like running across you know running across the street and they're like CJ CJ you know get get over here what are you doing and I'm like walking towards the train. I swear to God, I don't know if you've ever seen like the fly to the fly zapper, but that was like what it was where you're like, oh, you're like hypnotized. So then the train gets super close. And I don't know if y'all have ever been very close to a train, but when it gets so close, you're like, wow, it's coming very fast. It's not coming very slow. It looks like it's just creeping up, creeping up. No, 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 no. Now you can see the sheer, the fastness of it. Well, also what starts to happen is the train starts to suck you in like the wind or whatever, the, I don't know, wind tunnel or whatever. It it sucks you in. So it's coming closer to me and I start to feel myself 
um, walking towards it un involuntarily because I'm being sucked in at this point. How fast was it going? I have no idea. Could, couldn't tell me. I couldn't even, I couldn't tell you what color it was. And um, this was at night. So I'm like, you know, drunk at night. The train person can't see me, I would imagine, or he's going so Well, they can't fast. stop it fast exactly. enough to not exactly. hit you. Exactly. So there's nothing like yeah. you could be, oh, there's a woman on the tracks. And so, um, so I wasn't on the tracks. I'm to the side. And so I am getting sucked in as this train is coming towards me and I start panicking. I'm like, fuck, fuck. Is this a, I'm like, is this the way that it ends? And I just remember thinking like, I'm seeing the bright lights. It's coming towards me. I cannot move. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm being sucked in. And I'm like, fuck, this is fucking it. And I'm freaking out. And the train comes towards me and something jutting out it starts to pass and i'm being sucked in and something's sticking out and it hits me and i fly i literally fly like into the into like a ditch the conductor realizes that there's been a shift in the wind that he hit somebody so the conductor shuts the train down and it's like screeching to a halt it must have obviously been like a short train because somehow i get up run across the tracks into the house and um, hide in the closet. <laughs> I'm like, that'll, I'm really hidden away. And the railroad police come out, the, the train stops, the whole Southern Pacific is like shut down this particular track. Because if you think about it, there's other trains behind it. They're yeah, all on a time yeah. schedule. The whole thing gets shut down. The railroad police and the regular police are going door to door knocking. Is everybody in the house accounted for? For is everybody that you guys know? Everybody's in here and everyone is okay. They're like, yeah. The whole it was like in the news. They couldn't find a body. It was like a whole thing. I could have gotten in so much. I could have died first off, but I could have gotten in so much fucking trouble. That's yeah. a huge fine. Yeah. I hope they don't find me now, and I probably shouldn't be talking about this, but it's maybe fine. I, I, I feel like the statute of limitations is <laughs> well you're over okay. a decade ago. Yeah. But yeah, so I was literally hit by a train. My arm was like knocked out of the socket the next day. So we had to pop my arm back into the socket. I had like a huge bruise. But it, like like drunkards do, I like escape death with a fucking scratch. Wow. Insane, right? So, so crazy. And I, and I like, I. And that wasn't. Uh, no. That wasn't your wake up call. No. Yeah. No. I thought we we thought it was like funny and it's so and there's you know there's multiple stories like that and so this is the thing too is that when it cut like when it comes to being like a I guess like a alcoholic or even like just a drunkard there are so many stories that I have like that where it's like I just narrowly escaped death but it doesn't even dawn on me until um I'm sitting here today with you or I'm in um, I'm in a meeting and I'm maybe listening to somebody else speak and I'm like, oh, yeah, wow, that happened to me, too. And but back in the day, you're like, ha, 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 oh, my God, that was so crazy. Right. And then you just like go on about your day. And here's the thing. I had friendships. I had, you know, somewhat successful relationships, boyfriends. I had money in the bank. I was working multiple jobs. I was doing my webcamming still at this point. Um, you know, all my bills were paid. I, I had a car. I was living in a nice house. I had a couple roommates. So by anyone's standards, especially in that tiny little town, I was like doing really well. I was still doing modeling. I was doing really well. So even at that point, it never occurred to me that I, I knew that I wasn't probably drinking responsibly, but that I actually had a problem. It just didn't occur to me. And I think one of the number one things that people tend to think of when they think about sobriety is like, how am I ever going to have fun again? Not that getting hit by a train was fucking fun. <laughs> it wasn't fun, but we just recall back on these like things like, whoa, that was so wild, right, Karen? Like, ha ha, CJ, remember you were dancing on top of the table and oh my God, you're so wild and crazy, ha ha. You wonder, I know I did, and I've heard from many people, how am I going to have fun? What is that going to look like for me? What am I going to even be like? Am I going to ever be able to make a business deal? You know, what does everyone say when they sit down to a business deal? Do you want to drink? Let's go for drinks and discuss business. Or, you know, we did the business deal. Let's have a drink to celebrate or, you know, to the ladies brunch or to, you know, 
in anywhere. I got invited to some yoga thing the other day that was like yoga and champagne. I'm like, why the fuck do I want to do yoga, hot yoga, and then have champagne? What the fuck? But when you were drinking, that would have been a great idea. Fuck the yoga. Because I 100% would have done that. Yeah, I'd right. have been like, give me the champagne now. Like, why are we doing this yoga thing? But think about how much drunker you would get after you had like sweated everything out. Oh and you know what I mean? Like had a workout. Like, oh my God, what a great time to Plenty drink champagne. Yeah. That's like what pops into my head. That, and you know what? That's the thing too, is I think that's what, you know, you feel less maybe guilty even in that moment. Well, I just worked out. I so yeah. I deserve this. Right. And I'm just like, damn, you know, there's so many. We don't even realize the the ways that it's subconsciously ingrained in mm -hmm. everything. And I feel like um, especially being in the content creation business and modeling, traveling, doing the photo shoots, it's you, you just don't know what your next step is going to be. When I used to go to like a party or to a function, I'd beeline for the bar. Mm -hmm. I I would have never thought to stop and introduce myself to people. And then I'd get hammered and I'd wonder, well, why didn't I make any connections? You know, yeah. why didn't I seem to like yeah. stand out to anyone tonight? Well, because I was wasted, you know, an hour in. And so I think that's also the thing, too, is it's like, is it really all that fun? Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize I wasn't really having that much fun. It was just so natural to beeline to the bar when I was going to a function and to get drunk or to catch a buzz. And it, you you do, you have to relearn how to do things, how yeah. to have fun, but it's, it's possible. I do all the same shit now. And I think that's really what I wanna hammer home. I do all the same stuff. I still go to the parties. I still go to the events. I'm still doing the photo shoots. I still travel, I'm dating. Um, I'm dating somebody who's in the program now, but before then I had dated somebody who was very much drinking and did and was doing like shrooms and stuff. And I wouldn't date anybody that's doing like a hard drug, but like if you're going to drink some alcohol and do a little bit of shrooms, that's fine. That wasn't that wasn't the issue why we broke up. But the um, you know, some people are just doing it a lot better than what I did. And that looks fun. So you see that the normies we call y'all. Um, having a good time, just taking a few mushroom caps or a few mushroom chocolates, a few drinks. And you're like, wow, this looks so fun. Knowing full well that if I took like two mushroom caps or two shots and they stop, I'm like, fuck yeah, the, the party is going. I am ready to go. And then I'd be on a bender for like three or four days. That's not fun. And then yeah. I would hate myself when it came time to do like a podcast. I'd be like sitting there like you know and that's not fun that yeah. part of it isn't fun yeah or like it's just like we lack that off button yes exactly yeah, yeah i for sure there was one time where i like busted in the back of a restaurant because it was after 2 a.m and all the poor guys back there cooking i'm like give me the cooking wine and they were like <laughs> i'm like it's okay just give it to me in a coffee cup now nobody will know and they did <laughs> they were shocked wait had you been eating there previously? Yeah, or were I was just... eating, but I was ready to drink. And they were, I kept asking other people and like different waiters and waitresses. And they were like, no, we don't have any. And I'm like, you don't have any in this whole restaurant? And I was like wearing a hot little dress. And so I was like so annoyed, so irritated. I think I'd even sent out somebody else. Just go to a, um, like a gas station and just get me a little something. And they're like, everything's closed down. Yeah. And so I went, I cooking wine. I'm like went in the back slat like door flew open the men were like <laughs> shocked and i'm like and i had a plan already in my mind give me the cooking wine and just give it to me in a coffee cup and the guy's like okay okay you know like just please get out of here you crazy person and so these are like i would stop at nothing yeah and it it got to the point where it wasn't fun and now i'm having so much fucking fun so much fun and I would have never imagined that I would be able to have like a good sober life. And so I feel so compelled to talk about it, especially yeah. as a younger person. People don't. I think our generation doesn't really know what life could look like without the alcohol or the drugs because mm -hmm. it's just so and like the mushrooms thing and the ketamine now is so it's getting ingrained it's not so much alcohol anymore you know it was cigarettes back in the day now it's like if you're smoking a cigarette people are like what's you know what's going on with that person over yeah. there smoking a cigarette you know 
now alcohol is a little bit like that. It's like people aren't really getting belly up to the bar as much anymore. The drinking culture has dipped a little bit. I believe that's factual. Y'all can call me on it if you need to, but um, I believe it has dipped. Now it's more like a mushroom or like a ketamine thing, which I'm all for if you can use it normally. I just know I can't. Yeah. <laughs> if one mushroom's good, like give me a hundred. I'm like yeah. growing the mushrooms in the back of my house next week. You know, I'm like, I'm starting a business, guys. Meanwhile, I'm like doing them all to myself. And isn't it like such a relief? I mean, for me, you know, they talk a lot about, we talk a lot about freedom. Yeah. I mean, I was a slave yes. to that stuff. Yep. Like it was, and if I wasn't drinking, I was obsessing over where I was getting the next drink yes. from, when it was coming. Even when I was drinking, I wasn't enjoying it right. because I was obsessing about the fear of running out. Yes. I mean, I used to go to the liquor store and I used to buy two little bottles of vodka because I always got the little, because I like the travel. Okay. I like to be able to put it in my purse and take it with me. Okay. Um, and so I buy two and I was like, I'm only going to buy two because then that's all I'm going to drink. Mm -hmm. If I only buy two, the minute I get home, mm -hmm. I drink those two. Oh shit. I better go back to the liquor store and buy more before this kicks in and I'm yeah. too drunk. Yes. And so like I, it, I, I would take like, and I had like three liquor stores yep. that I would go to differently. So they didn't think yeah. it was a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. And just like the lengths that I went to, to try to control and manage it was like yeah. obscene and it just didn't work. But it feels natural in that moment. So I think that's the crazy thing, too, is were you having fun at that point? No. No. But our brains naturally go to, oh, my God, how am I ever going to, like, live my life? Right. I wouldn't say that, you know, oscillating in between three different liquor stores, you're, like, yeah. having a fulfilling life or that you're having fun. But that was, like, the natural state that your brain was in. So that's, like, what you knew. That's yeah. what your body knew. So it's familiar. I think more so than giving up the drinking, it's the scary part of like having to relearn everything and yeah. the unfamiliarness of it. But I, I promise you, like if you're ever, you know, if you think you might have a problem and you're sober curious or anything like that, it is fucking fun. We're having fun over here. Okay. I promise you. And, um, I just can't like stress that enough. It's hard. It's yeah. hard at first. Totally hard. It's yeah. the hardest thing you'll ever do. But for me, it gave me so much confidence getting yes. sober. Cause I was like, if I can do that yeah. and I've given birth, yeah. Fucking getting sober is harder. And really? I'm like, if I can do that, I can do anything. anything. There's yeah. nothing I can't do because yeah. that crawling out of that fucking deep, dark pit that I had been in for most of my life yep. was the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's like being on the other side is it's incredible. And just mm -hmm. the yeah, again, the freedom. Like, I don't have to worry about people going into my purse. Yeah. Like if my husband's like, I need to get your keys. Mm -hmm like what they might find in there mm -hmm. or like in my closet. Like I don't have secrets anymore, yeah. you know, which is like such a, oh, yeah. I was People are like, how do you everything. do anything now? And I'm like, I don't know how I did anything before. Before. Yeah. yeah. Like you were saying, even driving. Yeah. Like how was I driving? I couldn't, I couldn't make it home from like a shoot or something without stopping and getting those little bottles. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't wait till I got home to drink. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't wait that long, mm -hmm. like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I drink in the morning sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, how am I going to start? How am I going to get through the day without right. drinking? Right. And if it wasn't alcohol, it was marijuana because I had to have something. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't drunk, I was stoned. You know? Mm -hmm. um, I just, it was just, it was awful. It mm -hmm. was, it was absolutely terrible. And I just, like, every day, I swear to fucking God, I'm so grateful I'm sober. Yeah. And, and it wasn't that you were having fun in that moment. It's just what you knew naturally at yeah. that time. So it was just, like, now we're having fun and we're doing things, but sometimes it still feels a little unnatural. You're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't drive, but a lot of my sober friends that drive, they're like a police officer will get behind me and I'll be like, I still have a panic yeah, attack. Yeah. yeah. I know like, that oh, shit. there's yeah. not, they're not going to find anything. Exactly. It wasn't speeding, exactly. but it's still like, and yes. still, you know, the, 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 the one sentence that people can say to me that still gives me so much anxiety is, do you remember what you did last night? Oh, God. Or do you remember <laughs> that? Like, I still like yeah. if someone's like, oh, my God, do you remember? And not in a way of like you were drunk, but like, do you remember last night when something An happened? Innocent There's a question. And the fear and anxiety that grips me because I'm like and still sometimes to this day, because I used to black out all the time. Same. People will say, you know, if they say something along, along, the long, ugh, along the lines of, well, don't you remember like yeah. this happened? And I am like confident yes. that that did not happen because yeah. I was sober and I know. 
but there's still a part of my brain that's like, Scared. maybe yeah. you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It like wakes up that lizard brain of like, maybe you did something. Because yeah. I've had full on blackouts mm-hmm. where I've had conversations with people. I've, I remember once <laughs> I booked a shoot with Joanna Angel. This is so long ago. I booked a shoot with Joanna Angel when I was drunk and I, I guess she didn't realize. <laughs> I talked to her on the phone. I had a long conversation with her about it. I scrawled like I used to have a whiteboard that was like a date, yeah. like all these dates. And I scrawled across like three squares of days, Joanna <laughs> Angel. And I was like, and the next morning I'm like, fuck. Like, what does this mean? And I like, you know, and I, we didn't know each other very well at the time. I think it was like one of our first times working together. And I was like, and so I like called her and trying to like extract the information right. from her about what we talked about and what day we planned. Right without revealing to her that I had no right. recollection of our conversation. Oh, like, oh God, it was the worst. Oh. Very sorry, Joanna. <laughs> She's like, I never knew. Oh my God. Yeah, I, I think I told her You're the like, story. This is Danica Patrick's assistant. Yeah. <laughs> she, Holly would like to know what we talked about last night. I'm, I'm just the assistant. Just let me know. I, know. I did. I did think I did tell her about it a couple of years later. And right. she was like, I don't remember like, that's but. that's but isn't that the thing too it's like most people don't recall but you remember that as yeah. like just this low point and you have all this shame around it too and you're yeah. just like oh my god it's like so nice not to have that anymore now i get to have shame for other things <laughs> <laughs> you get Plenty to have other things to have shame about <laughs> you could be ashamed about things that you did in sobriety yeah. with like full knowledge and yeah. like collection of your facilities and like right. things that you did in absolute full sobriety you can yeah. be ashamed of yeah i'm things. like now i just do dumb shit and i can remember the thing in its entirety and i'm like oh god a blackout sure would be nice right about yeah it. i would love to have something to blame that on but no i was just being an asshole yep it happens. <laughs> oh my God. Well, CJ, thank you so much for coming on. It's thank been such a pleasure. Me. I feel like we could go on forever, but I know you you have a meeting. So I'm going to let you get your business done. Maybe maybe another day. Definitely. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? And your podcast, we didn't even get to the oh! fact that you have your own podcast. So yeah. go ahead and do all your plugs. Um, I have my Inside Only Fans podcast. I'm one half. It's uh, myself and Kayla Loren. That's at Inside Only Fans. That's on Instagram. And my Instagram, C-J-S-P-A-R-X-X. Only two X's, y'all. We're, we're not at that third one quite yet. We might never be. Um, and then CJ Sparks on Twitter. Uh, CJ doing things with a Z on YouTube. I have like some new YouTube videos coming up. Um, yeah, so we're just we're trying to be everywhere. We're having a lot of fun. Now that I'm sober, I have all this extra time. So we're getting things done in life. That's <laughs> Oh, and my... Only fans, uh, CJ Sparks fans, and CJ Sparks free. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll send them over. And then before we wrap up, I just do want to. I had a couple of just one comment and one question from a Patreon member. I just don't want to forget these. Okay. Um, Richard says, as a son of a woman who was sober 50 years before her death at 93, mm-hmm. I am so proud when I see posts of people who are fighting the battle every day. Thank you, Richard. And then Michael Lee says, hey, it's Michael from New York. Um, this sentence is a little bit convoluted. I'm not entirely sure what he's saying. Did you know who are these podcasts? Did a review on OnlyFans Inside? Please check it. Who who are these? Is um, that a- I know. Maybe he's asking about the guests. Who um, are these? Is that a podcast? Who are these? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a podcast called Who Are These? I feel like maybe he's asking if I know the guests. Um, maybe he's saying he d- did a review. I hope you gave us a nice review. I'm not sure. But I know all, a lot of the guests. Um, and then he asks, are you going to be at the AVN Expo? Okay, so um, we did get invited to go and do a podcast at the AVN. But I think uh, the other two people, um, Maximini, who produces it, um, very near and dear friend of mine, I think he's traveling. And then I think also my co-host Kayla is traveling. So unfortunately, I it doesn't look like we're going to be there. Maybe I'll go and meander around and hang out. I'm not quite sure yet. But as of now, we have no plans, unfortunately. Maybe next time. 
Okay. Um, and I actually will be at uh, the Avian Expo. I will be doing my podcast from the Joy Booth, which is the new Metaverse project that I'm working on. We are actually part of the Browsers Booth. So if you see the Browsers Booth, you will see me there. I will be there um, Wednesday through Saturday. So definitely come stop by. And of course, on uh, social media, you guys can follow me at Instagram at Holly Randall, Twitter at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to spot this, subpad. Ooh, support I am the pod. Support the pod. <laughs> I'm tripping over my words today. Support the podcast. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered and watch interviews like these live and ask questions like Richard and Michael did. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you next week. <laughs>